Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to Mold 60. This one's rather small but it's got two holes. The first one I pour up, I tip out the excess and then whilst the excess is tipping out I pour the other side up. This is so that they will set at a similar rate and one side doesn't dry out faster than the other. I then allow that to dry out enough to pull the sides apart to reveal a tiny mini stein with a lid. It is so small and it has little instructions on the side. So here's a look at the mold in case you're looking for it. But I also wanted to show you inside to see there's like little inscriptions on the side that say glaze here, um, don't glaze here that's all it says but i think that that's really cool it's just thoughtful that they thought about the creator and how to make it i did notice that when i was pouring this mold in particular that hoop at the top of the stein where the lid hinge sits it just would not fill up i tried watering down the slip i tried not watering down the slip um so it just would not fill up so first what i did was i decided i was going to fix it but i cut out the lid where it says to cut out fire carving away at that line because it was still quite wet i didn't want to damage and warp the piece too much so i used my pin needle tool to do that and then to fix that hoop i get a little bit of clay I sculpt it and attach it to where the hoop was and then I use the mold like a press mold and push it down and then cut away the excess to make that hoop. I've never done that before with a mold but it worked. It worked really well. Um, I popped a little hole in that hinge because I'm not really sure how it's meant to work but it looks like it's going to sit all right. After I'd poured this piece I went shopping and I went to the mill market and I noticed they had the steins there but like so much bigger and I think nearly every second stall had these salt and pepper shakers that were this stein with the lid and with that little hinge detail but I noticed that they were glazed together um they weren't working as like an active hinge I took some inspiration from that and I thought I really want to get this hinge to work now seeing that all these stalls had it not working. I don't know why it was like a mission. It was a mission to get it to work. I took some inspiration also from the colorway and I was going to underglaze the little details on these steins. And looking at that piece in the mill market there were a few pieces where they had underglazed details and I just didn't like the feel of them. I just didn't like, they just felt muddy. They just didn't feel the way I wanted it to look. It was almost like I got to see a, a glimpse into the future of what I wanted to do. I came back to these pieces and decided to just do some glaze mixes and just see how it all settles. I know that not many people are fans of when I use glazes in the comments, but I like them. I think they're fun. I like to see how they look. I just thought I'm not going to spend all my time putting in these little details when I can already see what it's potentially going to look like. And I hadn't seen one that was all glazed up like this at the mill market. My objective with the glaze is just to have a bit of fun. Uh, one of them I've gone with a green palette, one I've gone with a more blue palette, and then I'm trying out the Shino and the Albany slip again because I tried them on the birds and I wanted to see what it would look like on a more, I guess, like historical looking piece. Or I just wanted to see how it would look on a vessel. That's all it is. I want to see how it looks on a vessel. Something I have noticed over this course of doing this series is that I've really highlighted the fact that I collected a bunch of glazes because I saw all these ideas that I wanted to try and now my glaze palette does not match and is not cohesive with my underglaze palette. So it's really moody greens and blues and natural colors, whereas my underglaze palette is very flirty, pastel-y, fun colors. So I think with the YouTube money from this from your viewing this month, I'm going to go in and buy some flirty fun colored glazes. <laughs> so thank you for watching this week's reveal. It's making my glaze collection become more cohesive with my underglazes. <laughs> anyway, they went through the kiln. I had my fingers crossed that the lids don't stick uh, because it was a little bit more risque with some of those glaze colors. I opened the kiln up and I can't tell whether they've stuck yet, but 
These colors are wicked. I really like them. I really think that they're really fun. I am going to show you a before and after of each of the steins so you can see how much the glaze has transformed. I love glaze number one, which is an Amico Shino Chai Matte. The reason I bought this glaze is because I love chai lattes. <laughs> There's no other reason why I bought this. I just wanted to see if it looked like a powdered chai latte on a mug, and it does. And that's why I love this glaze so much, just because it reminds me of a chai. I really do like how the color settles, and it has a really lovely texture. This glaze also gives it like an ancient ruin feel as well, which I really like. Glaze number two was the Amico Albany Split Brown. Um, I've used this one previously on a bird reveal. I wanted to give this one another go with more layers and I am so glad I did because I love this speckled creamy warmthness. I actually bought this glaze because it reminds me of the Australian Outback with those really rich reds and soft sandy hues and I really think it translates in this glaze. Glaze number three was a mix of green chrome, green stone and arctic blue. I wanted to try and soften the greens with the arctic blue on the top and see if it sort of gave me an aqua-ish colour. It's not the best. Um, it's got a sort of muddy look. It's almost like there's too much glaze that you can't even really see those details anymore. Or maybe it was the wrong choice and mix of colours that it doesn't highlight the detail on the stein anymore. Regardless, it does have a really cool mesmerizing almost like an abalone shell on the surface. It could have even been highlighted more with an opalescent jade on top. Last up we have our Arctic Blue Indigo Float Eye and Luster and Mist Jade Opalescent Glaze on top. I really love how this one came out. It probably could have done without the Iron Luster but I wanted to see if it would mix. The hinge worked and then I noticed that the hoop has actually got stuck inside that hinge. That's just because I didn't wipe off enough glaze. But for the colour work, I really love using the opalescent glazes and on this piece in particular, I found that it turned these blues into almost like the Starry Night by Van Gogh, which is really cool. I didn't expect that to happen. It just has that really beautiful swirling of colour and I like that there's also a softness where the colour has more translucency where the detail on the stein sits. Because of how I filmed this reveal, it doesn't really show you how tiny these steins really are and why I couldn't really underglaze all the little tiny details because it would have taken me forever. But they are six centimeters tall um, and about 10 centimeters with the point of the lid on them. All the hinges worked, which is a success in my books. I do need to figure out a way to sort of keep them attached so that they don't fall off. Maybe a little wire. I do feel like these are something that are collected do you, have you heard of little stein collections i'd love to know in the comments anyway thank you so much for watching this week's reveal here is your sneak peek for next week's